Our first speaker of the day will be uh, Jake Parker from the Hypercasual Specialists uh, and our friends, long-term friend of the show, Kwali. Um, hello. Hello. How are you, Jake? How are you doing this morning? Not too bad, thank you. How are you? I'm not not so bad. I'm not so bad. I'm uh, yeah. I'm slightly. I was my slightly struggling. My my eyes seem to be getting smaller every every, every day. <laughs> You can pictures of myself from different videos. It's like, oh my God, my, my, my eyes are split, but I'm, I'm all right. A bit of sunshine coming out of lockdown. Mm. The Super League is dead. Everything's great today. So anyway, <laughs> enough football. Um, so your talk today is going to be entitled 15 minutes on 15 seconds. So it's about yes. hyper-casual ads, right? It's about hyper-casual ads. Um, and there you can see that now, right? I can see that. I'm going to, I'm uh, all yours. You're in it. I'm going to, I'm here in the background. Need any help or drop in. I'll come back with some questions at the end, but cool. off you go, sir. Thank you very much. So hello, everybody. I'm Jake from Kuali, um, and I'm here to talk about ads. Uh, so 15 minutes on 15 seconds, a lot to fill in a short period of time. So who are Kuali? I'll start off with this to give you a quick introduction in case you don't know. Uh, over 600 million downloads. We're a hyper casual developer and a hyper casual publisher. Started as a developer and then moved into publishing uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we're also now a PC and console publisher, building on the expertise that we've got, the, the, years and years of expertise of um, games industry veterans. Uh, we've got teams in the UK, India, China, Turkey, and remote workers. Um, and we're hiring. A lot of the jobs that we're hiring for are remote as well. We've kind of transitioned to that since um, COVID, and it's been working really well. So Hyper Casual Games, a quick introduction in case you don't know. Uh, a few things come with being a Hyper Casual Game, typically a short lifespan and short development cycle. Uh, the majority of revenue is, is coming from, from ads served within the game, and your game really needs to stand out in order to succeed. So there's, there's a huge amount of competition in the hyper-casual market and lots of different games competing for space, and a lot of, a lot of games rely on successful advertising in order to, to perform well and, and scale up the charts. So obviously these don't define what a successful hyper-casual game is, and that's not what I'm here to talk to you about, because there is plenty of resource out there and three missing cards. Oh, in fact, they're animating in. There are plenty of resources out there on things like what is a hyper-casual game, ideation for hyper-casual games, keeping it simple, gameplay in hyper-casual games, and why, like, why make hyper-casual games altogether? Um, but there's not a huge amount of content about ads. There's, there's a lot of talks about iteration, testing variants of ads and optimizing ads. So like, oh, I can't reach Pink Castle. We tested this and it got us 20 cents CPI when we had 23. Um, which there's, there's a great place for when you're when you're working with a game that has performed well in initial tests, you want to be optimizing those ads as best you can. And, and that's what publishers are working to do a lot of the time. Um, but in order to get to that point, you need something to land right. You need something to that catches people's attention and performs well in that initial test. Um, so I want to look at things that are consistent in successful ads and how you give every game that you make the best chance to succeed. Uh, in order to do that, I thought instead of going through a list of points, I'd talk about ads and look at some actual examples. So firstly, what's the aim of this marketing, uh, the marketing test that any publisher is going to put your game through? It's to put your game in front of real people, see if they like it enough to install it, and ultimately test how viral that game is. So the things to consider are that people are going to see these ads before they even see or touch your game. Uh, so these ads are critical to the, the success of your game. If you don't get across in that 15 seconds how fun your game is to play and why somebody should be playing your game over something else just by showing the gameplay, uh, your chances are you're, you're failing before you've started. Uh, so what commonalities can we see in, game, in ads for successful games? So I'll take Makeover Studio 3D as an example. So this is one from us, uh, currently number three in the US. Um, I have muted these videos, but there's a nice little jolly tune. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. So there's quite a lot to take in there. Um, but I, one thing that I like to do is I've done this quite a lot with developers and, and I was told it would make a good talk. Um, one thing I would do is dig into like the first few seconds of each of these videos and then how, how it kind of continues in a flow from that. So the first thing to note is you've got this, this eye catching uh, moment. You've got, you've got a woman with a beard. It's something that's going to stop you, whatever you're doing and, and you're going to focus your attention on that just because it's, it's an interesting concept. 
Um, and then within one second of this video, you can understand the mechanic from this side of the uh, ad. If I just turn on, oh, I can't turn on annotation. Um, you can understand the gameplay mechanic from this side of the ad. You can understand that you're swiping to control this tool and you're essentially painting someone's face with makeup. You're, you're applying foundation to change the appearance of the character that's in front of you. So by the one second point in this video, you, you already understand the concept of the game and what you're gonna be doing. You can see that it's called Makeover Studio and that you're going to be, there we go, Makeover Studio and you're gonna be making over these characters that come in. You can see that you're gonna be using this kind of familiar offset infinity control to manipulate this tool. You can also see that you've got this choice of applying makeup or using a razor to remove that beard straight away. Um, and obviously there's, there's an element of frustration in this ad where you can see that somebody's not playing it right. You, you can see that they're gonna to wanna to remove that beard first, but they haven't. Uh, so that's by the first second point, we've got all of that information. And then you kind of move on to the two second point and this expectation side. So the, the kind of satisfying gameplay side where they're doing most of the things right. That's continuing on with applying foundation and applying it to the entire face. So you can see that that's the objective. You can see that your aim is to apply foundation over the entire face. Uh, and then the reality side is starting with contouring and doing it all wrong. So you can see there's these guidelines, but they, they're having none of it. They're just kind of painting everywhere. You get the impression that not only is there a clear objective to the gameplay, but there's also a kind of fun tool that you can play with, a, a fun kind of drawing mechanic ultimately that you can play around with and, and color this person's face with. So as that continues, we then see the contouring on the expectation side, so that the satisfying gameplay side, you can see that like you can be really precise with this. And this is half satisfying, half frustrating. You see that you you have these little dots here where part of the contouring is filled in, but you ultimately want to get in there and you want to do it yourself. You want to very precisely kind of fill that in, make the most of it um, and make it perfect. There's like these dotted lines are an invitation to kind of make it perfect. And all of this is just gameplay from the, uh, from the game itself. So it's worth keeping in mind that the gameplay here is showcasing what, what's great about the game, not necessarily any addition to the video the only thing that's that's edited in this is that it's a split screen so we can show really satisfying gameplay and really frustrating gameplay in one and then the, the rest of the ad is kind of a continuation of that that shows you what other tools you're going to be using in this that complete the, the feeling of the game and how it meets the theme of being a makeover studio so then here you've got uh, highlights, you've got eyeshadow, and it shows you all of these tools that you're working with as you're playing through the game. So as you can see, there's, there's an accessible theme. You see Makeover Studio on that icon and you kind of understand that, okay, this is, this is a game. I understand the objective of this game quite quickly. And um, the controls are easy to understand. It's, it's a control scheme that people are familiar with. So watching that video and seeing this gameplay, you can understand that you're manipulating that tool and your objective is to get it within the lines. Um, there's an attention grabbing start. There's, there's a woman with a beard that's getting makeup applied. It's something that grabs your attention quite quickly, but is all based on pure gameplay. There's both satisfying and frustrating gameplay. So you can show players how they're A, how they get it wrong and, and B, how they get it right, but also how satisfying and fun it can be to be quite precise with those controls, be quite accurate in filling in um, the, the contour sections. So the objectives was clear and the only video edit, the only post edit that we've done is the split screen. So the focus is on gameplay. The gameplay is what is essentially selling the game in the ad. Bake It is another example. So this was number one last year. I will try and talk fast. Uh, so one thing that really stands out for Baker and gives us that impactful th first three seconds is the tech itself. The tech itself has been made and, and is used to create this dough. It's quite a satisfying kind of droop that it's got to it. There's, there's this really strong sense of physicality and that is what grabs your attention. That's what um, catches your eye. 
gives the ad your focus and makes you start considering, all right, maybe this is something that I want to play around with. And you can see like the only edit we've got here is this hand just to make sure that the controls are abundantly clear. You're tapping and holding and dragging around to squirt that um, dough onto the tin. Excuse me. Then you've got this next moment, which is from the gameplay. It's just showing, all right, this is the process that you go through. You're taking something from A to B. You're, you're essentially creating this, um, this little treat. Uh, so you're, you're then baking it and you've got another section where the, a similar tech is used to then decorate that cake. So you can see that you're, you're playing with this tech um, where you're able to create this kind of soft body, almost liquid, but not quite um, physics. And that's, that's all happening just with the touch of your thumb or the touch of your finger. So from a, from a viewer's perspective, before I've even played this game, it's quite an enticing con concept to bake something familiar. So everyone's quite familiar with baking. Um, and there's a, there's a satisfying physicality to every moment of this gameplay. And then the video kind of carries on through that to the, to the payoff at the end. So there's a big payoff that is, this is what you've created. And it kind of implies that that's, that's what you're going to be creating throughout. So bake it. So there's some super cool tech in there. Um, a really accessible theme again. The controls are easy to understand. An attention grabbing start where you see something that you haven't seen a huge amount of in mobile games, which is that kind of liquidy soft body physics tech, uh, satisfying gameplay. And the objective is clear. You can see quite clearly the, the objective from even like the one second point, the objective is to fill in these lines and, and be accurate with that. There's a slight sense of frustration here where, oh, he's, he's just missed that line. Uh, and here where he's kind of overlapped what he was doing before, it makes me want to go in there and kind of precisely do it perfectly, but I am a perfectionist. Um, so that's Bacon. Sharpshooter Blitz is another one. Uh, and I'm ignoring the caption for this, but the, the, the caption can sometimes help to make the gameplay quite clear. So make it clear what the objective of the game is, which this kind of serves the purpose of here. But also you're seeing, and if I unmute for this first view. <laughs> So here you start by showing by one by the one second point you understand the controls. Uh, again, we've added the hand here. The, the controls for this are to tap and drag and then lift your finger to shoot. Um, and this this hand is added just to make that abundantly clear. So it, it doesn't look like there's a second button to shoot like a lot of first person shooters. Um, but within the first second, you can understand the controls. You can see that. Okay, this is this is how I'm playing this game. I'm dragging, releasing, and that's firing a bullet. Um, and then at the two second point, you can see that wherever you hit an enemy, um, they're animating based on that. There's a sense of physicality and dynamicness. Uh, I think the real word the, for that is dynamicity, but dynamicness. Um, you can see there's a sense of dynamicness to how you're playing this game. And your input as a player is impacting the world that you're playing in. Uh, so then that kind of continues in the same vein. And then we had three seconds of quite satisfying gameplay where everything is perfect. And now we get on to some slightly frustrating gameplay where you show how easy it is to, to miss and almost entice players to want to take the phone off you uh, with that gameplay. So you kind of, you show that, oh, look, he's, he's messing it up. There's a, this slight sense of frustration that can help to drive players to want to install that game. Um, ultimately giving that feeling of, all right, give me the phone. I can, I can do better than this. Um, so an accessible theme, I think a lot of people are familiar with first person shooters now. The controls are easy to understand with a little bit of help. Um, and it's a new control scheme for a, for a mobile FPS, or was at the time. Um, there's an attention grabbing start and this one kind of relies on audio for that attention grabbing start. There's, there's not a huge amount that is massively attention grabbing about this in and of itself, but this is gonna make you pay attention. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's a mix of satisfying and frustrating gameplay, so you can see how you can play the game perfectly and feel really good, and how you can miss and not quite get it right. Um, the objective is clear, take down all the bad guys, and the game is super fun. Uh, so commonalities. We can see that a lot of the ads that we're using to test games have an attention-grabbing start that uses actual gameplay. 
the gameplay is being showcased and does most of the work in terms of making the game marketable. Um, all of them are, are accessible and easy to understand in terms of theme and in terms of controls. Um, there's a clear purpose or objective to the gameplay and there's a sense of physicality and dynamicness. Um, so Makeover Studio has this like blending and this sense of impact for the makeup, covering up blemishes. Um, Baker has that dough and icing tech that looks fantastic. Um, and Sharpshooter has that, that physical reaction where you hit the bad guy and this feeling that any impact you make on that world is gonna mean that the response, the reaction is different. So what lessons can we take from this? Uh, the gameplay does most of the work, make it great and let it shine. Um, think about how you present your gameplay and ads when designing your game. Like, can you add a sense of physicality or dynamicness from the start? Can you create gameplay that is both satisfying and frustrating? Um, ads are critical to gameplay and it's, it's common to make a game and then just record some footage of it, right? It's just, it's just gameplay for that. But if you, if you start thinking about this stuff from the start, you can line it up so that the, the, your ideas, your, your designs can have a better chance from the start, hopefully. Um, and you can start thinking about these great moments for ads and how your gameplay can lend itself really well to attention grabbing ads. So that's it. That's 15 minutes on 15 seconds. Uh, get in touch. There's QR codes. We live in the future now. Contact me, contact the publishing team. Blimey, that was you, Stuart. You, you stuck to it. I thought, I thought you were going to, you're obviously a pro. You're obviously used to hyper casual. You see these hyper casual publishers. Yeah, we can do it in. I could do it in 30 seconds, you say. My mind, we've got 15 minutes. <laughs> So, um, great. Well, that was, I was, I was, you had time. I was saying you could, could have, you know, I know that's not what hyper casual is about, but you could, you could have taken more time. Uh, <laughs> but we have, we have time for questions now. So I'm just going to uh, pop open this box. We've got a, we've got a chunk, um, chunk on them here. Oh, God, there's a lot of them. So we might not even get through all these. I'll try and, I'll try and be uh, bite sized them. So uh, I've got one here from our own, a very own Matthew Ford, I'm going to start with. Um, uh, which is a bit of a bit celebratory. Can you come on comment on Quali surpassing 600 million downloads? Have hyper casual ads helped reach the new milestone or at least not hindered the studio's growth? Look at that. Definitely. Uh, they're a huge part of that success. <laughs> that's great. Congratulations. That's uh, that's that's a big milestone. So yeah, it's going incredibly well over there. So well done. Um, Okie dokie. Um, I, I, I noticed this is a question I, I thought myself as well. From an, I, it, is it essential to show frustration? I, I, I see that. It is obviously powerful. I, I kind of find myself getting annoyed by it often in, in some of these ads because I, I kind of go, oh, I, I know what they're trying to do to me. But obviously, I presume it works. it's a psychological trick that works, right? Do you have to have it yeah. in, every, in every demo? Is it, is it an advisable checkpoint? You don't, you don't necessarily have to have it in, in every ad. I think it's, it's really valuable to include it and include <laughs> gameplay that um, allows you to fail in quite a almost pleasing way or um, frustrating way. Um, so it allows you to create this situation where the answer is very, very clear and very obvious, but you can you can just miss it um, and create that sense of frustration. Yeah. So I guess related to this is another question. Is, is there like a technique to make them the ads feel a bit more real? Because some of them do feel totally obviously staged. It's like click button and the hand goes over here and clicks <laughs> like an orange or something. You go, yeah, that's stupid. Do you, yeah. do you, do you like, is there any particular techniques to are you saying just you have like a, a success and then a narrow miss is that's the way to do it yeah the technique to that is is to record gameplay for the for the ads like all of those ads that i went through are gameplay recorded from a device that we've then just cropped to the right size and where relevant have added a very small edit to the top of it but i think in the in the first stage where you're testing out this idea you want to make sure that it's the game that is helping you to perform well it's a game that's bringing you that success as opposed to aha we did this fun thing on the video where we completely faked something and that's what's worked oh, that's interesting so so uh, uh, there's another question about the, the tools and, and how you create all these so so you, you're saying that these are just kind of not just but they're they're recordings of actual gameplay you know by either yourselves or, or others and, and you kind of uh, work on that so do you have any kind of complex tools for creating these videos or is, is what would for indie developers can they just do this easily themselves yeah so you should be able to record from the device um ios natively has that functionality android there are a lot of free apps where you can just record um gameplay footage and that should be the main focus like sometimes you could even record that gameplay footage in like the unity editor and resize your screen to the right size for the ads yeah oh, fair enough um 
<laughs> going back to kind of a, a, a topic, you you you've very much there talking about live video, right? Live video ads of the, the game, um, which obviously, as you say, could be quite easy to create and. Um, yeah, is is uh, quite honest. There, there is a trend, or there has been a trend of ads which are maybe slightly less honest for games. Well, not honest, but they they just basically don't really show gameplay. They show some uh, some. What, what what's your, what's your take on that? I mean, obviously, marketing. You know, not everybody drinks yeah. Diet Coke gets to 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 you know we uh, meet a, a gorgeous man or woman instantly. But but so these things that, that is marketing to a point. But what's your take on on that? Um, on sort of. In, I guess honesty in adver- in those adver- in adverts. I think so. I think there's value in in stuff that helps to to give a game that's or an advert that's kind of doing okay a little bit of a boost. Um, I think there's value in using that stuff. But I think that the main focus, especially in the early stages, should be making sure that the thing you're trying to market to people, the thing you want people to install, you want people to play this game. That's the thing you're using to show that that thing is fun, as opposed to anything in addition to that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Um, <coughs> upon me again you talked to the, uh, about um yeah about bush pushing a, a, a big game obviously hyper casual is a very competitive space now um uh there's you know people are doing very well and that obviously uh, games as a whole is very competitive mobile especially H- how do you how do you deal i, I guess uh, there's two questions here i'm going to try and combine together H- how do you deal with with kind of um uh with com- competitors or, or or clones i guess or uh, in 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 one way, in the absolute, but in another way, in a marketing angle, you know, how do you deal with that? Do, 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 do you look at what the people are doing and try and differentiate? Should you how is is there a way of kind of tackling that? I guess you know, I, I, you know. So there are ways of tackling clones, um, and that's obviously publishers are pretty well equipped to do that. There are yeah. um, systems within like Apple and Google's ecosystems where you can submit. Um, an appeal and say, all right, these guys have clearly copied my game. I released it first, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't really relate to ads, right? The, the, the thing to watch out for with ads, you definitely want to be watching what other people are, are showing in their ads and, and how games like it's, it's one thing that was really interesting to me when I started learning a bit about hyper casual was the fact that the games are a huge part of it, but also the, the games being presented in ads are, are equally huge. Um, that, that's just as important a factor in hyper casual game success. So looking at the games that are hitting the top of the charts and understanding not only why the gameplay is fun and how they're, they're engaging users, but also what are they focusing on in order to scale that game and reach the top of the charts and, and put it in front of as many people as possible. Digging into uh, to ads and, and just kind of understanding, spending 15 minutes on 15 seconds and understanding um, what it is about that ad that they're focusing on that makes the gameplay appealing, that makes the idea of playing this game a prospect for somebody that, that's just scrolling through a feed or playing another game entirely. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I've got a couple more I'm going to try and get through because uh, there's a lot in here. I'm not going to get through every, everything, but I'll try and get through here. Uh, as a question about what, what are the differences between ads on, on different platforms between Facebook, uh, USC, ad networks? Do, do you... Are, are you... You know, is it a kind of one size fits all, or are you kind of deliberately creating different variations of ads for different different marketing uh, sort of channels? To an extent, it's a it's a one size <laughs> uh, fits all. But you like when we get to the point where we we've tested a game, we know that there's a lot of potential there. That's when I kind of hand it over to the to the creative team and the marketing team, and they they do their thing. That's when they start iterating and optimizing on videos, um, yeah. and we we kind of offer them suggestions and ideas for that stuff. Um, I think. One thing to think about with that stuff is uh, ad networks against Facebook, for example, you're looking at two different user behaviors. There's somebody who's already playing a game and is seeing yeah. that ad in between this game. So you're trying to pull them out of something that they're already doing that is probably quite fun to them um, and give them the, the idea that what, you're, what you want them to do, to play your game, is more fun than what they're already doing. And on the flip side, when somebody's playing, scrolling through Facebook, for instance, and sees your ad there, you're trying to pull them out of that behavior where they're kind of scrolling and looking for something fun to do. So you want, like, yeah. there's an openness to have their attention grabbed, um, but you still have to work to grab people's attention. And that's why there's there's typically these moments at the start of ads where you're grabbing attention with something that is in the game that looks appealing, looks fun, could look a little bit wacky, but still grabs people's attention enough to then pay attention to the core mechanic. And if that mechanic is fun, that's typically what allows people to or encourages people to install again. Okay, so tension grab, 
cool mechanic, their frustration. <laughs> Good. Right. Okay. Um. I'll, I'll, I'll get with one final question here. I, I, I think there's 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 a couple that, again in the same sort of area, talking about um video ads versus interactive ads, or, um and and asking what is the, the sort of as in playable ads. What what are the what sort of percentage percentages of of results are kind of coming from each of those? Obviously the, the costs oh. are very different, but but you know are, are playables delivering far more? You know how do you balance that? Do you do a lot of playable ads versus um just kind of video or flat ads? That is a question for our marketing team. I do, yeah. so I know that we, we run both. So we run video ads and, and <coughs> ads, as do a lot of publishers. Um, and in terms of the success of one against the other, I, if I'm 100% honest, I'm not sure, but I know, I know people who will be sure if that helps. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a, uh, a good answer. Um, I, 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 but you won't know this about IDFA deprecation because that's not your your space. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's a, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, whoever asked that, we will come back to that. We had our IDFA summit yesterday. Um, Apple announced they're going to be switching to 14.5 on on Monday. Eek. So it's going to be an interesting time for all of us. Uh, quite a news week. Um, on that note, um, oh, there's one more I can ask, actually, one racial one. Does Quali have big plans to engage with indie developers around the world? Well, you're here, obviously. So um, is there anything you can share? Have you got any, any exciting plans ahead? Uh, we do, indeed. There's not a huge amount that I can share right now, um, but there'll be stuff coming out in the near future that I can share. Um, okay. so I, I should set up another talk for that. You should, uh, you should separate the talk. Uh, 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 maybe there's another event come up. Who knows? We do them so we do them so so sparsely. So it's, it's hard an opportunity. But um, thank you so much for your uh, for your talk and for very, being very You're generous welcome. with that that that, that uh, those tips and and yeah and, and for, for continuing to support us. So I'll let you disappear into for the rest of the uh, into the ether uh, now. Um, if you want to talk to Jake, you can obviously go and find him or, or there's a, a number of the quality team here as well. You can find them direct in the Meet to Match system or the Discord or wherever. They're very ha uh, very friendly, very helpful. Um, if you've got a hyper casual idea, hyper casual game, uh, talk, talk to them. Cheers, Jake. Thanks, okay. Chris.